The shocking truth behind Mercury's deadly recall engine could have left thousands of boaters stranded in the most dangerous conditions imaginable. Picture this, you're miles offshore when suddenly your pristine Mercury Verado loses all shift control, waves building to 8 feet, and that massive cargo ship is getting closer. This wasn't theoretical. It became reality when Mercury discovered catastrophic corrosion affecting their entire Mariner and Verado L6 outboard line. But here's what Mercury didn't advertise. This wasn't their first shift problem encounter. The corrosion cracking revealed a decade-spanning pattern, affecting everything from supercharged L6s to four cylinders, forcing multiple recalls worth millions in repairs. Let's dive into what actually went wrong with the supposedly bulletproof engines. Mercury's Verado line has always been marketed as the Rolls-Royce of outboards. Smooth, quiet, and powerful enough to make your fishing buddies jealous. These L6 engines, ranging from 200 to 350 horsepower supercharged models, were engineering marvels that could push a heavy offshore boat like it was a bass boat. According to Mercury Marine's official service bulletin 2011-03, the problem involved potential corrosion cracking at the base of the shift control studs of both the shift bell crank and the upper shift shaft. Now, if you're thinking that sounds like technical mumbo-jumbo, let me break it down in terms that'll make sense. The shift bell crank and upper shift shaft, basically the mechanical bits that let you go from forward to reverse without grinding your lower unit into expensive confetti, were developing stress cracks from saltwater exposure. These weren't surface rust issues you could sand off and forget about. We're talking about structural failures that could cause complete loss of shift control. The really insidious part. You wouldn't know anything was wrong until it happened. One day you're backing into your slip after a perfect day on the water, and suddenly you can't shift out of reverse. Or worse, you're navigating through a crowded marina when your engine decides to stay in forward gear permanently. Before we dive deeper into this marine mystery, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, you'll want to stay updated because Mercury's recall saga continues to evolve and I'll be covering every new development as it surfaces. Plus, coming up later in this video, I'll reveal maintenance tips that could save you from becoming the next shift failure victim. Now, let's talk about what a recall actually means in the boating world, because it's fundamentally different from automotive recalls. When the Coast Guard determines that a boat or engine component poses a substantial risk of personal injury or property damage, they invoke the Federal Boat Safety Act. This isn't some casual suggestion. It's a legally mandated repair that manufacturers must complete at their own expense. The government safety standards for marine equipment require that defects creating unreasonable risk of personal injury or death, affecting substantial numbers of units, and related to design, construction, or materials must trigger a recall. What makes marine recalls particularly challenging is tracking down owners. Unlike cars with registration databases, boats change hands through private sales, making it nearly impossible to notify all affected owners. Mercury might know they sold an engine to Bob's Marine in Florida, but if Bob sold it to Jim, who who sold it to Karen, who moved to Minnesota, that recall notice might never arrive. The recall process works through Mercury's dealer network, creating its own challenges. Not every marina mechanic is a certified Mercury technician, and not every Mercury dealer stocks specialized recall parts. This creates bottlenecks where boaters wait weeks or months for critical safety recall repairs. Consider these real-world scenarios. You're fishing the Gulf Stream, 20 miles offshore, when a summer thunderstorm rolls in. Your engine won't shift out of neutral, making you a sitting duck in building seas with lightning all around. Or you're navigating a dangerous inlet when shift control fails in forward gear. You can't slow down can't reverse, and those breaking waves are pushing you toward the rocks. Forum posts from affected boaters paint a vivid picture. Charter captains reported being unable to shift into reverse when approaching fuel docks. Tournament anglers described losing shift control during competitions, requiring embarrassing toes back to the ramp. Families found themselves in dangerous situations when shift actuators failed while towing water sports enthusiasts. According to Mercury's official documentation, this could result in possible stud breakage, which would cause a loss of shift control, which could result in property damage or personal injury. 
The Verado shift control system uses an electro-hydraulic design that represents a significant departure from traditional mechanical cables. When you move your throttle control, it sends an electronic signal to the shift actuator, which uses hydraulic pressure to engage the gears. This allows incredibly smooth shifting, but introduces multiple failure points. The corrosion specifically affected the studs connecting the shift bell crank to the upper shift shaft. These studs face constant stress from shifting forces while exposed to the marine environment. When salt water penetrates protective coatings, it corrodes the metal, creating stress concentrations that lead to cracking. Once started, cracks propagate quickly under normal operation loads. Mercury's fix involved replacing both the shift bell crank and the stud of the upper shift shaft, with newly designed components featuring enhanced corrosion protection. The replacement parts use different alloy compositions, additional protective coatings, and improved sealing against water intrusion. If you thought the Verado recall was isolated, Mercury dropped another massive recall in 2019, affecting V6 175 to 225 horsepower and V8 200 to 300 horsepower four-stroke models. Service Bulletin 2019-01 identified that water can leak into the shift actuator, which could cause internal corrosion and wire damage. The symptoms were particularly concerning. Failures of this type will eventually cause the engine to go into Guardian forced idle, loss of shift control, the engine remains in its last gear position, or the engine may not restart. The affected serial numbers were 2B588807 and below for standard models, and 1E080585 and below for racing models. Parts availability became a major issue. Forum posts described dealers reporting three to four week back orders for shift actuators leaving boats unusable during peak season. Some technically savvy owners researched alternative sources, though Mercury warned that using non-OEM parts could affect warranty coverage. Mercury's most recent recall in 2025, documented in Service Bulletin 2511, affects 75 to 150 horsepower four-stroke models dating back to 2011. The issue again involves shift shaft stud corrosion in saltwater applications. This recall specifically requires installing a retainer bracket and implementing new maintenance requirements greasing the shift linkage every 100 hours or annually. Interestingly, engines that have only been operated in freshwater markets do not require the retainer bracket to be installed. This distinction essentially acknowledges that Mercury's original design struggled with saltwater exposure without regular preventative maintenance. Time for another quick reminder to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're finding this information valuable, smash that like button. It really helps the channel reach more boaters who need to know about these issues. The original Verado recall information surfaced prominently in Australia, where Mercury is recalling its Mercury and Mariner Verado L6 outboards, affecting all models with serial numbers 1B812047 and below. Australian boaters dealing with expensive coastlines and year-round saltwater usage were experiencing failures that quickly caught regulators' attention. This raises interesting questions about how Mercury handles safety issues across different markets. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission ACCC, maintains strict product safety standards, requiring manufacturers to act swiftly when defects emerge. Owners of the affected engines are requested not to use their vessels and to contact their nearest Mercury or Mariner dealer to arrange for the bell crank stud to be replaced free of charge. What's particularly noteworthy is how information spread through the Australian boating community. Forums like Ozfish and Regional Fishing clubs created rapid awareness that likely accelerated Mercury's response. The tight-knit nature of Australia's boating community means word travels fast when engines fail, especially among commercial operators who depend on reliability. Australian dealers reported being proactive in identifying affected engines before owners even received official notices, demonstrating how seriously the market takes marine safety. The documentation also notes that owners of used Verado should check the engine's serial number, and if in doubt, contact the nearest dealer for advice and or rectification, showing Mercury's effort to reach second-hand owners who might miss official notifications. Early adopters of Verado technology essentially became unwilling beta testers for revolutionary engineering. The supercharged four-stroke technology delivered two-stroke-like performance with four-stroke fuel economy, but revolutionary often means unproven. 
Forum discussions revealed that beyond shift control issues, early Verados experienced various teething problems, including supercharger concerns and electronic control module glitches. The psychological impact created what many boaters described as shift anxiety, a constant worry about potential failure. Affected owners report changing their boating habits, avoiding solo trips, staying closer to shore, and carrying extensive toolkits and spare parts. Every throttle movement brought uncertainty about whether the shift mechanism would respond properly. Financial implications extended beyond repair costs themselves. Boats with affected engines faced challenges in the resale market, with potential buyers demanding proof of completed recall work. Some marine insurance companies began asking specific questions about recall status during policy renewals. Marina operators became more cautious about boats with outstanding recalls, concerned about liability if a shift failure caused collision damage in tight quarters. Tournament fishing circuits had to develop policies about boats with pending recalls, balancing safety concerns with fairness to competitors. The ripple effects touched every aspect of ownership, from routine maintenance scheduling to long-term financial planning for boat upgrades. Here's crucial maintenance advice gathered from experienced Mercury technicians and seasoned boaters. In saltwater use, consider greasing your shift linkage components every 50 hours rather than Mercury's recommended 100-hour intervals. Use Mercury 24C Marine Grease specifically. It's formulated to resist washout in marine environments. After saltwater trips, flush your engine thoroughly for 15 minutes, exceeding the manual's 5-minute recommendation. Running at varying RPMs and shifting between forward neutral and reverse to help flush salt deposits from shift mechanism areas. Understanding the mechanics behind proper greasing technique makes the difference between effective maintenance and wasted effort. When applying grease to shift components, the mechanism needs to be worked through its complete range of motion to distribute lubricant properly. Simply pumping grease into a fitting creates pockets where corrosion can still develop. Start with the engine off, apply grease to the designed fitting, then manually operate the shift lever through its entire range at least 20 times. You'll actually feel the resistance decrease as grease penetrates deeper into the mechanism. Temperature plays a crucial role that many boaters overlook. Grease applied to cold components doesn't flow properly, creating air pockets where moisture accumulates. Always warm the engine to operating temperature before greasing. The thermal expansion helps grease penetrate into tight tolerances. One technique involves running the engine for 10 minutes, shutting down, immediately applying grease, then restarting to cycle the warm components through their range. The type of flush water matters too. If you're in an area with hard water, consider using using distilled water for your final flush, as mineral deposits can accelerate corrosion. Some meticulous owners install inline filters on their flush systems to remove chlorine and minerals. Additionally, after flushing, spray the exposed shift linkage components with a quality corrosion inhibitor, like CRC656 or Bowshield T9. These products leave a protective film that repels moisture between uses. Mercury certainly isn't alone in confronting recall challenges. Yamaha faced their own crisis with first-generation F225 and F250 engines, experiencing devastating exhaust corrosion that could lead to complete engine failure. Suzuki dealt with DF300 engine blocks literally cracking apart. Even Honda, despite their reputation for bulletproof reliability, had to recall outboards for potentially dangerous fuel pump failures. What distinguishes Mercury's situation is the persistent pattern of shift-related failures across diverse engine families spanning more than a decade. When similar failures occur in supercharged L6 engines, naturally aspirated V8s, and inline four-cylinders, it suggests fundamental design philosophy challenges rather than isolated component issues. Examining how different manufacturers approach marine corrosion reveals fascinating engineering philosophies. Yamaha's exhaust corrosion stemmed from using aluminium alloys that couldn't handle extreme temperature cycling in saltwater environments. Their solution involved completely redesigning the exhaust cooling pathway, adding secondary water passages to maintain consistent temperatures and prevent the thermal shock that caused corrosion. The engineering fix required rethinking how cooling water flowed through the entire powerhead, not just replacing failed parts. Suzuki's response to their DF300 block cracking issue demonstrated exceptional customer service, despite the severity of the problem. While engines were literally splitting at the seams, a catastrophic failure by any measure, Suzuki managed the crisis by maintaining transparent communication with owners and dealers throughout the process. Different manufacturers have adopted varying approaches to corrosion protection based on their engineering heritage. 
Honda, with their automotive background, often employs closed-loop cooling systems that completely isolate internal components from raw water, accepting weight and complexity penalties for superior protection. Tohatsu uses proprietary composite coating processes developed through their long history building commercial marine engines. Evinrude, before ceasing production, pioneered direct injection two-stroke technology that reduced internal corrosion by eliminating fuel washing of cylinder walls. The pattern across the industry suggests that every manufacturer struggles with balancing performance, weight, cost, and durability. Mercury appears to have prioritized performance and competitive pricing, while companies like Honda chose conservative engineering even when it meant heavier, more complex designs. There's no perfect solution, just different philosophies about which compromises to accept. For owners who've completed recall work with updated components, the news is positive. Failure rates drop dramatically. The redesigned parts with enhanced corrosion protection genuinely address the root cause. Mercury has also quietly extended warranties on shift components for many affected engines, through what they term warranty enhancement programs, though owners must specifically ask dealers about these programs as they're not widely advertised. Used boat buyers can find opportunities in this situation. Verado-powered boats from affected years often sell at discounts due to recall reputation, even when work has been completed. Smart buyers who verify recall completion with proper documentation can acquire boats with updated components that may actually prove more reliable than original designs. Always request copies of recall completion paperwork, not just verbal assurances. Mercury has clearly invested in improving their testing and quality control procedures, implementing accelerated corrosion testing protocols that simulate extended saltwater exposure. They've also enhanced dealer training programs, focusing on proper maintenance procedures for shift mechanisms. Mercury makes incredible engines when properly maintained, but their shift-related recalls reveal aggressive performance engineering potentially sacrificing long-term durability. The pattern across multiple engine families over a decade suggests systematic design philosophy issues. If you own an affected Mercury, get recall work done immediately. Failure is sudden and catastrophic. Check serial numbers against recall databases before buying used. Maintain shift components religiously, regardless of brand. If this video helped you understand Mercury's recall situation, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more marine industry truth. Comment your shift problem experiences below. Let's build a community database beyond manufacturer narratives. Share this with dock neighbors and fishing buddies running older Mercuries. This information could save lives or prevent massive repair bills. Until next time, keep your props turning and shift linkage greased. Fair winds and following seas, everyone.